We're going to have a look at mail merge now and specifically being able to edit and sort the mail merge recipient list. You will have already worked with mail merge. These are these are enhanced features, but with this process I will go through mail merge from so we start by using the tools, letters and mailings and mail merge menu options and that brings up our mail merge task pane. Now the beauty of mail merge is that it is six simple steps. Six simple steps. The first step is select the document type. The default is letters. That's all we're going to work with here but I strongly suggest that you work through the other options to see what the resultant output would be. The process is just the same. So step one is select the document type. It's on letters, nothing for us to do. That's what we want. So we go on to the next step. Step two, select the starting document. And all this is saying is, do we want to use the current document, this one? Or do we want to start a new document? Well, I want to use the current document. So I'm leaving that selected and we go on to the next step. Next step is select the recipients. That's who is this document going to be merged to. And we've got three options. If we've already got a data source, we can use an existing list. We can connect it up to our email Outlook contacts. Or if we haven't got a data source at all, we can type a new list. That's what I'm going to do. Type a new list and then create. All you do then is fill in the details of your recipients. It's going to take me a little while, so I'm just going to pause and fill those in. I've typed in some information. Um, if I just go first and previous and next, you can see some of the information that is there. So we'll close that. Word then says, give me a name for this address list. So I'm going to put um, Cockermouth because that's what my is about. Um, it's always best to have a really meaningful name there so that you recognize the data source for what it is at a later stage. Click on save. After saving the list, we get the mail merge recipient dialog box up. Now, if we hadn't created a list, but the list was already there, when we clicked on browse to find it, we'd still get to this window. So this is the next natural window in the process. And it is the main dialog box that we're working with for this little video about advanced mail merge. It's usually the area that's glossed over at more basic levels. Things we can do with this dialog box are edit. That allows us to go back in to the details of each individual record and make changes. 45 could be 450 Castle Drive. So we can edit the data source from here. You can see that now says 450. Other things we can do. If we don't want to send the letter to Jack Spratt, we can just take the tick out of the box. Put the tick back in again. We can clear all the ticks. We can select all the recipients. We can sort. I clicked on last name then it sorts them into alphabetical order of last name or sort into order of first name. So you can sort and that will be the order they appear on the mail merge document. And then we also have these little drop down arrows. These allow us to use criteria to select who we want to send them to. For example, we might only want to send this document to all the men who live in Cockermouth. So this is the process we would use for that. We click on the title drop down arrow. And you can see there we can choose Mr, Mrs, Miss. That's picking up all the items that were in the list. Or we can go straight to advanced. If I just show you Mr to start with, you can see it filters down and only leaves us with two Mr's. One in working and one in Cockermouth. So I can filter that way. Or I can go straight to the advanced. And we can use this dialog box to choose 
that we want to work on the title field and we're looking to make sure that the title field is equal to Mr. And the city is equal to Cockermouth. Before I click on OK, just have a look at those comparisons. We could have, for example, if age was a field, we could find all the people that are older than 27. We could have um, all the information that's got a blank in that field. Have a good look around these, play around with them, see what kind of features you can come up with. So hopefully this is going to find me all the men who live in Cockermouth. We then click on OK. And yep, you can see there's only one man left in this field. So we, whatever we are left with in this male merge recipient box is the people that the document will be merged to. We then click on OK. So we've selected our recipients and we can always go back and edit the recipient list again. We can go into that as many times as we like. The next step is to write your letter and putting in our merge fields. I'm going to do this manually using more items. You should be familiar with this process already. It's slightly cumbersome because you've got to do your formatting as you're going along. So I've got in Mr. Uh, title and then last name. And then I've got to come out of the box and press the enter key and back into more items. And that's out the end. And I'm just going to finish this off now, so bear with me a minute. Look, I've inserted all my fields now. We've got the title, last name, address, line one, city, and first name. So we've finished inserting our merge fields. We can go to the next step. Now, this is where people go wrong. They think, aha, I've now finished my document. I've merged the document. Because look, there's the information, Mr. Spratt. But you haven't. You are just previewing your letters, looking at what it will look like when you have finished the merge. If you've got more than one recipient, you can use these arrows to cycle through them to see what it would look like, but you haven't yet merged. I'm happy that the way my document will look. At this stage, you can still go back to edit, edit recipient list and add more people in. In fact, I think what I'll do is go back into advanced and I'm going to remove this layer. Change that to none and OK. You can go to that recipient list as many times as you want. Now when we cycle through the recipients, you can see there's more than one. Happy with how that looks, we can then move on to complete the merge. And this is the next area where many people go wrong. They think, aha, I've completed the merge because look, there's my data. But you haven't. This is still a preview. If I scroll that down, you'll see there's only one document with that one name at the top. But this is your power document. This is your form letter. This is the document that you should save and preferably save it as a template. If you save this as a template, you end up with a document that you can use over and over again that is linked to your data source. So if you want to run this mail merge again, you simply open the template and all your information will be there. So assuming now that I've saved that document, I now want to do the merge and I can either print directly or I can edit the individual letters. And you can see we've got a new document called letters one First document is to Mr. Smith, and as I scroll down, you will see the second document is to Mr. Spratt. This is the merged document. That's the finished document. Underneath, we've still got the form letter. That's mail merge, looking at criteria and editing the recipient list.